I, I would like to share with you my faith and what I see in the scriptures. So I'd like to start with myself and my personal testimony. Um, and I think the best place to start is probably when I was uh, in high school. Of course, I was raised, like all of you, as Catholic, baptized at three months old, went through the catechism courses from uh, First Communion to, to um, Confirmation. And I think after confirmation, which I think is around eighth grade, is when I really kind of lost interest. Um, it just wasn't fulfilling for me. There was nothing in the, that I was getting really out of the, the Catholic Church or going to the Mass on Sundays. And I, I really was only going a couple of times a year. I know my mom didn't like that, but I really wasn't getting anything out of it. One of the biggest events in, for, for me was, I think I was about 16 years old. I think we had gone... This is a few weeks before Easter, maybe a week before Easter. And we have, were going to confession on a Saturday evening and then the Mass after that. And I think Aunt Sue was with us, probably Mike and Tim and Ken maybe at the time, and Rob. I, I forget who all might have been part of that caravan. But we had gone to confession or we were going to go. I don't I forget if we actually got in or not. But it was time for the Mass to start. And the priest came out. Um, O'Byrne, I, I can't call these men father anymore, I haven't for years, but O'Byrne came out and called everybody in, O'Brien, O'Brien was his name, and um, called everybody in and had everybody take their seats, um, those that hadn't gone to confession yet, called us all in, raised up his hands and said something, maybe a prayer, I don't know what he said, but I do remember him saying this, that our, our sins are absolved and then gave us a penance to say, so many Our Fathers and so many Hail Marys, um, but all of our sins were absolved. And I remember thinking at that time, how, how you can't do that. How, what does that even mean? You know, um, so that, that didn't sit well with me. Didn't really give it a whole lot of thought. But I remember that taking place, and I remember me questioning it. Um, so the years go by, and I kind of you know get further and further away of from the Catholic Church. And I start going to college, and I think it was my sophomore year, which would have been 82, I think. I forget. But anyway, it was I think it was September of 82 at El Camino. I had a philosophy class. And the professor was, on the first day of class, was talking about the Big Bang Theory, um, really teaching for fact that there is no God, promoting the idea of evolution and all of that. And I remember sitting in the back of the class thinking, that's just ridiculous. She really, by trying to explain to us how all of us, this came into existence, convinced me that God created everything. Now, I wasn't um, what we would call saved at that time. I, but really, it, that's when things began for me. I was convinced that God created everything. And if God created everything... There must be a reason for it. So over the next few months, I really began to search and um, pray as I could. Um, you know, I, I read books I, about Christianity, about the, uh, the Bible and all of that. And early in 1983, maybe the spring of 1983, a friend of mine was going to a Baptist church in Redondo Beach and kept inviting me to go. And I kept refusing um, but there was a special service that was taking place on a Saturday. They called it a youth rally, which was just basically a fellowship meeting for geared towards young people at a Baptist church in San Fernando, California. And um, I had nothing to do on this Saturday night, which was unusual. I usually worked on Saturday night, but that night I happened to have off, uh, so I went. And um, really, that was a life-changing experience for me. Um, more of me coming to where I'm at right now. Um, my friend was friends with the pastor at the time of the church in San Fernando, and we went to their house for dinner. I didn't know these people, never met them before, but I was at their house for dinner, and what I found amazing was that their, their whole life was centered around Christ and the Bible, and they weren't weird. You know, they weren't hyper-Christians that are just, you know, weird people out of touch. They were very normal, but their life revolved around Christ and the Bible. 
And I found that intriguing. This was the pastor of the church, a very genuine man, um, very down to earth, very easy to talk to. And we went to church after dinner. And again, I was amazed that everybody there was in a large congregation, not like I was used to going to the mass at Catholic Church. It was a small building, was probably pretty full, but I think maybe 50 people were there. But they all had Bibles. And the whole service was geared around the Word of God, specifically the Word of God. And I don't, don't recall, it was too long ago for me to remember what was said, but I remember being moved and touched by that experience of being there and the genuineness of everybody. And I met the pastor who was there from the Redondo Beach Church, my friend's pastor, was there. We talked. He invited me to come to church the next day, Sunday. And I, I usually work in the afternoon, in the evening. Um, but I, I went uh, the next day and went to Sunday school class. And this is no joke. I think I learned more in that Sunday school class at that time than I, I learned my entire life about the Bible. Again, I'm not blaming my family for any of that. I'm blaming the Catholic Church for that. They don't use the Bible. Um now, I'm going to talk more about that in future lessons, but I was just uh, amazed at what I learned. And in the sermon, I was moved. And over the next few weeks, I kept going and was, you know, became very intrigued by what I was hearing and what I was learning in the Bible. And um, in fact, I went out and bought a Bible that I had never owned before and started to read it. And um, things just began to open up to me. And it was, um, well, I'll share this first, because I think this, as far as the order of events, I, I think this happened first. I really began to question my faith as a Catholic. And my friend was asking me some things about what I believed as a Catholic, and one of them was regarding Mary, the mother of Jesus. And he was asking me, for example, you know, where it says she was always a virgin, where it says she ascended bodily into heaven, um, and a lot of the things that the Bible teaches about Mary. And um, I didn't know where in the Bible it said these things. I was, you know, but I, I figured it had to be there, you know, if that's what the Catholic Church taught, it must be there. So I randomly called um, St. Catherine's Church, which is where the church I was raised up in, just asked for a, a, a priest, any priest, to speak with. And I got a hold of somebody and was asking him some questions. And I asked him, where in the scriptures does it say that Mary ascended bodily into heaven? That she didn't die natural death, that she ascended bodily into heaven, and that she was born without sin, which is what the Catholic Church teaches. And his response was a jaw dropper to me because he said it doesn't say it in the Bible. It is doctrine that became dogma over the centuries. And I, I had to re-ask my question. I, I go, so you're telling me that what we believe about Mary is not found in the Bible? And he said no, which of course is true. It's not found in the Bible. Um, it developed over the centuries, and really I think it was around 600 A.D., is when the doctrine concerning Mary being born without original sin, which is called the Immaculate Conception, which I've, I've heard of growing up as a Catholic, but I thought it was referring to Jesus being born without sin, but that's not true. The Immaculate Conception is concerning Mary being born without original sin. Um, I'm going to talk about that as we get into Luke chapter 1 and 2. But... Um, the fact that he said that these things concerning Mary are not found in the Bible um, really was enough for me to just uh, walk away. Um, back to my testimony, I continued to go to the church, the Baptist church in Redondo Beach. This is such a long story. I need to make it short uh, because I'm going to start losing a lot of you, I think. I'm already going on over 15 minutes, but it was in September. September 12th, actually. I remember being under conviction 
which means I was bothered about my sinful condition, knowing that I was lost, knowing that I wasn't saved. And um, a few a few weeks before I was actually saved, I remember asking the pastor. I, I wanted to join the church, to be honest. I wanted to get baptized. And I had seen enough and was convinced enough to, to understand that I, I thought that this was the right way. Um, but he asked me when I told him that I wanted to get baptized, he asked me when I was saved. And I told him, I'm not sure, but I must have been saved somewhere along the line because I've always believed in Jesus. And over the years, as a pastor, I've heard many people say that same thing. And um, he told me at the time that salvation is a, an experience of repentance, where you come to an understanding of your lost condition, and you put your faith in Christ. And at the moment of faith, you are born again. And we're going to talk about a lot of these things in our coming studies, but I had never experienced that. I couldn't think of a time where I had that experience of being saved and that confidence of knowing that I'm not going to go to hell. So he gave you some verses to look at. We talked a little bit more. We had some Bible studies over the next coming weeks. And specifically on September 12th, 1983, um, I know that date so well because I've told, shared it so many times over the years in different messages that I preached. But on a Sunday morning, as the pastor was preaching about the second coming of Christ, I became so burdened uh, that I was lost that I remember just during the message, about fifth, with about 15 minutes left, trusting and repenting and putting my faith in Christ. Now, I went down to the altar afterwards during what we call invitation time, and I knelt down and prayed, and the pastor... I think he knew what I was down there for because we had been talking about it. the whole church had been praying for me to have this understanding and to be saved. So we talked a little bit while I was down at the altar. Um, he prayed. I prayed. He didn't tell me what to say, but I knew I was already saved. And I stood up and typically, you know, one at that time would address the congregation, share their testimony of being saved and usually um, request baptism which I think he thought I was going to because I had a few weeks before, but I knew I was saved, but I wanted to make sure that if I'm going to get baptized, that it's the right thing and the right church. So I told him no. And over the next couple of weeks, uh, months actually, I studied a lot. I looked into the Baptist history, Christian history, church history, and I became convinced at that time that the, the, the lineage and the history of the Baptist churches, specifically landmark Baptist churches, have a history that goes right back to uh, the time of Christ. I think that can be proven historically um, through church history and Baptist history. And I was convinced. And when I got baptized on December 12, 1983, I was convinced that it was the right thing to do. And I'm still convinced after all these years, uh, what, 36 years now? Um, I'm still convinced that this way is the right way, the way that was established in the scriptures. As you all probably know, Christianity is so confusing, and um, it doesn't have to be. The Bible can be clear with the aid of the Holy Spirit. So I was saved and baptized at that time, and soon after that, I'll go quickly through this, but uh, soon after that, the Lord brought Susan into my life, and it's such a blessing to meet a woman that, you know, we've been on the same page, not only then as a young couple, but, you know, throughout our marriage, we've been on the same page spiritually with our family, with raising our, our two sons, which have been a huge blessing for us. Nick and Easton are such incredible blessings, um, but God has blessed our family um, immensely. And he's blessed all of you as well. If you just think about your life and how God has worked, yeah, we all make mistakes. We we all fall short. I've, you know, over the years, fall short many times. Uh, but God is so good to us. But what I really want to stress about this is personal faith in Christ. That is, is the key. And nothing else matters without personal faith in Christ. The Bible says that there is no other name given among men by, by whereby we are saved than the name of Jesus. And um, I'm just kind of 
shooting from the hip here now. I'm not really using my Bible. I'm just sharing my testimony. But there is no other way to salvation than through Jesus Christ. I know that's offensive to say in our society today. That means that some people who put their faith in other forms of religion and other men, that they're not going to go to heaven. And according to the Bible, that's exactly what I believe, because the Bible does say that. So that's what I want for my family, is for you to have the confidence knowing that when you do die, that you are going to be with the Lord, and that one day we're all going to be together again in a more glorious way than we ever have been during this lifetime. So there's so much more about my life, my testimony that, you know, I could share, but I think that's enough for now. Um, I love all of you so much. I wish we could be together in a more personal way, um, more closely, you know, together um, like we used to be. But this is wonderful. This is a great way of staying in contact, staying together. Um, I'm going to give you all my my personal contact information. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask me personally, please feel free to do so. Like I said, I'm going to send out the first lesson on try to get it out by Monday. Feel free to watch it whenever you can. Um, take notes. I, I would recommend that have your Bible with you, read the first two chapters of Luke and Matthew and the first chapter of John. John's kind of unique, but we're going to get into some of that as well. Um, but take notes, ask questions, reach out to me. My email address is smwaters, Stephen Michael Waters, smwaters54 at gmail.com. My phone number is 951 264 6909. That's my cell number. Send me a text if you wish. Call me. Um, be happy to chat. Um, but again, I love all of you very much. Uh, I'd like to be able to keep in contact uh, some way, you know, maybe through this means or, or whatever. Um, for those of you in Washington, love to come and visit one day. That's our plan. Just, you know, so busy with everything. It's kind of hard, but hopefully that will be able to happen in the near future. But thank you for watching this. Um, I'm going on 25 minutes now. I want to keep it. Hope that wasn't too long. But anyway, God bless all of you. And um, again, feel free to reach out uh, to me and to one another just to, to stay in touch. God bless you all. Have a good afternoon.